Hello and welcome. Yet another episode of a CEO teacher. Oh, hold on. Shahid, this essay is crap. You must be extraordinarily creative to write such dreadful essay. Look at the grammar, the punctuations. It's just the sentence formation. Did you receive feedbacks like that? If in the previous episode you learned how to give feedback, let's come to the real world how to receive one. Have you ever received some strong, difficult feedbacks and you found yourself completely at odds how to react? Oh, I've had enough of them. I'll give you two at least. You know, I was doing a workshop on history and for some reason I had completely two different feedback from a brother and a sister. So the brother comes up and says, wow, I never knew history this way. It was amazing. Look at the way you connected the real life. And the sister comes and says, hold on, what was that? Dates, time, so many names, people. Oh, I thought you would do a lovely set. You were talking too fast. Your slides were just not good. There were too many names to capture. And I just could not understand the whole idea. And you know, you were like, hold on, I just received an excellent A star. But that's the world of feedback. You will never have similar ideas and emotions from similar people or dissimilar people. Feedbacks are difficult to get, accepted, admitted. You know, criticism can be hard to accept. But the surprise criticism, those unintended and well-intentioned feedback that come out of nowhere, that pop up and then, are the hardest to get because you're not prepared for it. You just don't know what to do about it. And you are like, what do I do? And a lot of people I've seen, they have two reactions. Number one, either it's the snake reaction or the turtle reaction. I have a great friend of mine, you give a feedback to him and there comes out the snake. You know, it is an aggression. Why are you saying that to me? Oh, I'm lovely, I prepared so much. And for every feedback you give them, there is a counter feedback that you get. So you are telling them, hold on, you are going very fast. And there you are. No, I was absolutely slow. I, could, I knew I was pacing myself. Your content was too much. Hold on, I just did one hour. And you thought, oh, I just exceeded for 15 minutes. That's okay. The snake reaction. I have yet another bunch of friends or one specific friend of mine who has the turtle reaction. Give a feedback and there he retracts into the shell not to come out for the next few weeks. No more conversations, no more suggestions, no more exchange of ideas. So if you're one of them, I'll give you three lessons, probably one more as a bonus. How do you now receive feedback? And if you're someone in the profession of teaching, you should have lots of feedback coming your way. Classroom observations, performance appraisals, principal meeting, and yes, the parents. So how do you take it? Lesson number one. Whenever you are given feedback, look beyond your own feelings. So, you know, I have this tendency to react to a feedback or retract to a feedback. Remember the snake and the turtle? Don't do that. There's something called constructive criticism. So now, whatever feelings that you have, just label your feelings. I'm getting angry. I'm getting irritated. This is very frustrating. It's really nice. Just label them. So now, when somebody is giving a feedback, try to have these emoticons or smiley faces and say, okay, this is the smiley face to it and do nothing about it. So you are having an internal mini conversation as someone's giving you feedback. Number two, look beyond their delivery. Perhaps the one who is giving feedback may be hard on you, but his intention or her intentions are really honest. They genuinely want to develop. And maybe they just don't know how to give a good feedback. They have not listened to this episode of giving a feedback, the previous one on our episodes of a CEO teacher. So remind them to listen to this for sure. You will do them and yourself a big favor. They are not equipped to teach you in I messages. And I messages when you say, I thought that you could improve on it. So what you do is you are conveying the message that you see you are really good. It's just my perception. Maybe that's good. So avoid confusing the package with the message. The package was hard. The package was very glorified. The message was very subtly conveyed. So number two is look beyond their delivery. And number three is don't agree or disagree. Just collect the data. You see, that's somewhere we get wrong. When I give you a feedback or you give me a feedback, I don't have to agree with you. Neither do I have to disagree. All I do is I accumulate the feedback. I'm collecting a data and my data becomes a resource for me to improve. 
and the fourth bonus one is after with some distance yeah take your time decide what you want to do with the feedback do it delete it delegate it it's your choice but feedbacks will become so much more meaningful if you receive in this way so let me repeat let me repeat what i just said look beyond your own feelings give a label to the numbers or emotions you're getting number 2 look beyond the delivery the other person may not be equipped but his feedback may be genuine and don't agree or disagree just collect the data you will become a far more better person do not have to be a turtle do not have to be a snake just be yourself this is daud waid your host i love to hear your suggestions your feedback your criticism blog tweet or email me and i'll be waiting for you thank you so much have a good day